13 mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Speedway, thanks for listening to Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of number 17 Toyota in our NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
Yeah. Now, when you've raced at Langley as much as you have, and going to the other tracks, has has Langley been a, a good helping and stepping stone for you for learning the other tracks? Uh, it's been pretty good. Yeah, Langley's pretty different than everywhere else, especially when you go to a real high bank racetrack. But um, Langley's a tough place to get around, and uh, I feel like it. You know, it's a good. It was definitely a good starting place, and. Um, you do learn a lot when you go out of town though, and race those other races and other race tracks. Especially the last couple of years, we've been uh, kind of moving around and probably moving around too much for what we're capable of as a race team with the people that we have. You know, which is not really many. Mainly me on the race car, and then help from a couple of other guys on the crew some during the week. So I mean, it's you know, it's just tough to really put that stuff together and go out and be able to have time to test and you know I mean you're going to other people's home track that they race that week in and week out and to compete really well it's pretty tough but you know we're going to um, plan on well now that we built this one and uh, kind of know how this one we did this one um, like I said we made some changes and hopefully we can go out of town and run pretty well now have the people at the other tracks been helpful at trying to help you set up or are they trying to help screw the pooch on you um no nah, i mean i don't ever really go to anybody else for setup i mean usually most of the stuff you know if i take my langley car somewhere it'll, i'd probably have to tweak on it a little bit but usually once you got something pretty good it tends to be pretty decent in other places but um you know it's just like a matter of testing and tweaking on it and getting it right and comfortable and race well no that's that's all you're looking for you know get some experience in um give give the people a little bit that haven't heard about you some roots about yourself where you started from um started when i was nine years old i think back in 99 started racing go-karts out of langley uh, with the hampton road car club and raced those for a year then raced mini cups two years there then uh kind of went around with the Virginia Mini Cup Racing Association and we raced across Virginia. This was there, I mean, tracks like South Boston, South Side, a um, couple other ones, can't remember now. But, um, and then raced Grand Stocks at Langley in 2006, 2007, 2008, and 2009, I raced late models out there, and then 2011, or 2010 is when we kind of, kind of just started going around to other racetracks, South Boston mainly, um, in 2010, I guess, and South Boston some, and then Motor Mile last year quite a bit. We went, last year we raced Motor Mile in Southern National in Martinsville. Um, it's definitely given me some experience, and you learn, other, you learn different things going to different racetracks, because, I mean, higher bank racetracks, they see a lot of different stuff and it's different as a driver you know change into a like a racetrack like motor mile where you have a real long straightaway and you got shorter corners and same with martinsville you know martinsville is a lot different than a lot of other racetracks so that you know you got a real long straightaway and no time in the in the corner really was slowing down you know hard on the brake slowing down and around go the other way now when you what it, Martinsville for you. What uh, other tracks do you try to take and uh, practice on to get you ready for Martinsville? Uh, Motor Mile is really a pretty good one because it's kind of the same deal there where you have a long straightaway entire corner. Uh, Motor Mile has a little more, a little more banking, but um, it it's usually a pretty good one. But you, you know, you really like to go to race Motor Mile once or twice before you go to Martinsville because a lot of the, a lot of stuff's pretty close. And make sure you have all your braking stuff right because uh, racetracks like Martinsville, the braking is important. And, and it's a lot different than Langley where you're pretty much going, almost going in a circle. You know, we barely hold the steering wheel straight long at Langley. Now, when uh, do you have a in your mind a schedule or a plan of what you're going to do uh, to start moving up? Um. Really, you know, it's kind of tough. You got to have a lot of money to do it. But being uh, or being a mechanical engineer and graduate this past spring, it really helps. 
you know, I feel like I understand a lot of the race cars a lot better, and I've talked to a few people here and there, but probably going to focus on running more late model shows um, in the future, just trying to race a lot more and more weekends and, um, you know, kind of go from there. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'd like to find, be able to find a sponsor or somebody, a team that would be looking for a driver, you know, in one of the higher divisions, but... Um, Right now, we're just going to keep focusing on what we got on the plate right now and just do the best that we can at this level and hopefully be able to move up in the future. Now, now have you been uh, trying to put out some feelers or trying to make contacts in the uh, other divisions? Um, just a little bit. You know, I mean, we've a little bit here and there. Uh, really just started racing hard and really just started being really competitive in the late final division now and just start to build, I guess, uh, you know, attention in the past year with all the with all the good runs and the wins and polls and everything, and uh, we're just really going to have to kind of build on that, if, uh, which, I mean, I, I would love to, I'd love the opportunity to race at a higher level, because that's what it's all about. You know, I'd like to compete at the highest level possible, but, um, you know, it's something I'm going to focus on here in the... Uh, the very to come future, uh, you know. Well, now, with the K&N drivers, when they came into town, did you uh, try to get in to talk to any of the people there that might be able to get you a stepping, helping step to it in, uh, to for finding into somebody you can get in with? Yeah, I had, um, I had a, one come to me about maybe running one, but we just couldn't work it out. But, uh, you know, it just, like I said, it's kind of tough. Yeah, I've, I'm, I'm trying to help some other people try to do that stuff, too. So I know what you're talking about, about being tough and everything. It's just, uh, you just got to catch some of the companies at the right time that you want to talk to, to, to get your face out there and get their their message out there, too. Yeah, and I mean, that'd be something I'd definitely be interested in, and that's, that's what it's all about. I mean, sponsors want to come and be a part of race teams to promote their business, and I mean, that, that's what that's what's important, and that's what I feel like we need to try and tell and help them. You know, if they're willing to support us and sponsor us and advertise on a race car, we need to be able to make sure we can help grow their business, and that's something, you know, I would definitely be our, make sure that we put our best effort in doing that for them. So, you know, talking about sponsors, now, who you got hanging out on your car this year as far as sponsorship goes? Well, it's Walt Engineer Sales, uh, primary sponsor, but we also have Gavcon Incorporated. Those that, uh, they've been with us throughout the years at uh, Langley Speedway and so forth, attorney of the law, um, help us out. And um, I think that's about it right now. Well, here, here's a question I, I usually don't ask too many people. If you had to quit racing mm -hmm. for any unknown reasons, whether just all of a sudden sponsorships just drop to where you can't do nothing, that do you have a regular job or do you have something that you would prefer to do in case you ever couldn't race anymore? Well, yeah, I hope that doesn't happen, but um, I mean, right now, just with being a recent graduate I'm still finishing up one class right right now but just got my mechanical engineering degree and I would definitely love to stay in racing no matter what but don't really plan on quitting driving because that's what I like to do and that's you know I, I feel like I'm I guess I'm pretty decent at it <laughs> yeah yeah I mean heck yeah you, you've, you've got a couple of at least a couple of wins at, how many you got wins so far this year at Langley I know you haven't been looking at the points but yeah well we got two wins this year but we've been the fastest car a lot of times it's just you know, keep running into trouble, and um, it's going to work itself out. And we're a young team, and I mean, I think the oldest person that works on the race car is by Kyle. He's 25. <laughs> uh, so I mean, we're young, and but um, been around a little while, and I guess since we're younger, and really, uh, you know, it was good on my dad's part when we were younger to, to make us work on the race cars. You know, everybody else, a lot of kids my age had hired help. Got kids that have thousand dollar a week crew chiefs in there, but um, 
it's always just been us and learning and experimenting and really just doing all the uh, all the chassis and set up work on ourselves or by ourselves and now we have good bank racing and engines and they've been great and help from Preach Motorsports and J2 Performance Jamie and all them and so I mean it's uh, working out. Good, good. Yeah, yeah. I, w- I was talking to a friend of mine earlier tonight, and he said, "Oh, by the way, I'm gonna be coming out and run- running a late model for the first time." So you're gonna have a new person out there this weekend running late models. Oh, okay. You probably know him. You remember Joe Scarborough and the Modifieds? Yeah. He's a coming out there to go play with you guys. <laughs> I got you. Well, that's good. You know, I mean. Joe's raced quite a bit. I've never raced with him, but uh, at least he, he knows what's going on. We've had a little issue here lately with uh, you know having new guys come out that um, ended up just you know we're gonna have to have a little meeting or something about guys making sure they stay out of the way when the leaders are coming. Cause that was our issue this past weekend. Uh, there were two lap cars racing side by side, and me and Nick were nose to tail, and I was right behind Nick, and Nick tried to split them three wide, but started with, uh, you know, lap cars should have been out of the way. I mean, I wouldn't have gone three wide in between two lap cars, but, uh, you know, first of all, they needed to be out of the way, especially when the leaders are coming. I mean, I know everybody wants to race, but and they had to move over flag for a reason. Yeah. Those guys move over. I mean, the whole thing is you're supposed to drop down to the inside lane and, and give you guys room to go around on the outside. Um, it, it used to be so strange, uh, Back when when I was out there playing around, uh, if I got the move over flag, I'd, I'd I'd hear Greg Edwards later on that night be fussing. He said, "When they give you the move over flag, you're supposed to slow down." I said, "Well, if you're inside the car, you would notice that I was running about 500 less RPM, so I would be slower. So you guys go around. I can't help if the car corners better than your does." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He said, "Well, I can see that too." So, but I mean, uh, it's it's a hard thing to call you know the if the guys are racing each other because i've seen where when lap cars come by and the guy that's behind of the two will try to sink in behind you and try to get a free pass out of the deal you know yeah but then you know i mean if they're gonna be racing well it just starts with the guys need to stay in line when the leaders are coming yeah let you get by and then they can go back to racing after you go on the pass yeah that's right but it was only i think me and nick and about a half track behind us to the third place guys so yeah you know, all right well go ahead and uh let me go ahead and let you do another shout out to your sponsors and let you get back to your stuff and uh, we'll continue on with our next person all right yeah just like i think walton here so dab kind of incorporated still for the turn the law and uh crease motors boards with good chassis and billy banks racing engines and j2 performance cool beans we'll tell everybody i said hi all right. Yeah, I appreciate it. Appreciate the invite on the show. All right, and uh, I'm gonna probably go out there this weekend, so I'll run into you. I haven't had a chance to go out there much this year. All right. Yeah. Come on, from about a bit. All right. Talk at you later then. Okay. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye. All right. That was Matt Waltz from Waltz Racing. Uh, next one on the show we are going to be having is Derek Thorne, if I remember correctly. <laughs> And we're supposed to call him. So let me do that magical thing. Hey Derek, this is Roger at Let's Talk Racing. How you doing tonight? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm sitting here relaxing in a nice cool room. <laughs> you sound like you're out on the road All somewhere. Right. You sound like you're out on the road somewhere. Can you hear me? Hello Derek. Yeah, I got you. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, it's better. It sounded like you had a whole bunch of background noise like the windows were down or something. Oh, okay. Is that any better? Yeah, a lot better. All right, good. All right. You're out in California, if I remember correctly. You know, now you're stuck in California traffic. <laughs> oh, geez. I've been there and done that when I stayed out there for uh, about a month, many moons ago, and it was, and it's a whole lot worse than it is now. Yeah, I don't know where they all come from, but they seem to come out of the woodwork, especially this time of, especially this time of day. Yep. Well, right now we have on the phone Derek Thorne, uh, racing in the K&N West Series. Um, go ahead and give us a little resume about yourself, so some of the people that haven't heard about you might learn something. I started uh, go kart. I actually started off when I was six racing bicycles. And my dad got me into go karts at eight. And then between age eight and thirteen, I went from like uh, I started off with like the, they call them outlaw karts, which are dirt circle track go karts. You know, I started off in five horsepower in a couple of years. Went to one twenty five cc. Then went to the five hundred cc class. Um, won a couple championships doing that. And then when I was thirteen, my dad got me into a local street stock division. Um, I ran that for two years and won a championship, and then he got me into the IMTA Asphalt Modified deal. Ran that for a couple of years, and then we ended up with a, like a tour car or super late, uh, depending on which part of the country. I guess different people call it different things, but we ended up with an Asphalt Super Late. Ran that for a couple of years, then I found myself living in Wisconsin in uh, 2007, running the ASA Late Model Series. Got to run like Bristol, Milwaukee. Riley Raceway Park, Pensacola, Florida. Um, got to kind of travel the country a little bit. And then in 08, I ended up running part time in the NASCAR 10 and East Series for six races. And then uh, the year after I ran, 2009, I ended up back in California working as a, like a car chief mechanic for a junior joiner out of Bakersfield, California. He's a guy that crew chief for Crafton at the moment, Matt Crafton in the NASCAR uh, Camper World Truck Series. Right. Worked for, him, worked for him for three years, ended up running into a guy by the name of Byron Campbell out of Bakersfield, who is who I drive for at the moment in the Spears SRL Southwest Tour Series, but we'll run 10 races a year, and then I also drive for a guy out of Southern California, even deeper south in Bakersfield, where I, he's the guy, Bob Rincotti, the guy that owns the NASCAR Canyon Pro Series West Series team. Ah. Well, that sounds good. Now, it's Campbell... I'm trying to remember. That name sounds familiar. Is he linked in with, um, oh, shoot. Uh, oh, God, I'm having a brain fart here. Brian Ter- Campbell, baby. Uh, Ter- is, is he work- linked in with Terry Carson? Uh, no, I don't know. I think, well, I just know Brian Campbell. He races kind of in the Michigan area. He's pretty well known, but I don't think they're related. Okay. Well, not necessarily related. Terry Carson has got a lot of people that he helps out with. In the racing series, and they're and they're uh, based out of uh, California area. Okay, I got you. No, no, the name hasn't crossed. I haven't crossed that name in a while, at least if it, if it is somebody related or if they know each other. Well, next time you're on Facebook, just look up Terry Carson or Carson Racing, and I'll check that out. Yeah, but uh, now, now what? Now you said you went to Madison, Wisconsin. That's where I, I lived there for two years. Oh. That, I've, I, I've actually visited Madison, Wisconsin. It had nothing to do with racing. <laughs> I missed it. It's either snow and everything's white or springtime and everything's green. Oh, uh, yes. One of the biggest thing I've noticed back there is people are really nice, and then they don't. It's like out in California, everybody buys a piece of property, and as soon as they buy a property, they got to set up a fence. So that way everybody knows where the property's at. Back there... And you go buy 20 different houses, and there's not a fence to be seen, and everybody's showing the same lawn. Well, I don't know. Maybe in California they're worried about it falling into the water, and they want, just want to make sure how much of theirs was still left or something. It's possible. You never know in California. There's a bunch of trains going, that's for sure. So how, how are you doing in the K&N West Series this year? Yeah, it's been a good year. We've, uh, I think it's, we're, we're leading the points at the moment, so that's, that's a bonus. So we just won our last race at Infineon, which is a bonus, and we won one other race beginning of the year uh, at Stockton, California. So I think out of the six races we've won twice, and we haven't finished up to the top five yet. But uh, not for all those years, the Canadian Series is 15 races, you know, on every track, 
different we go to to where, you know, you just kind of got to take it one race at a time and just try not to make any mistakes. You know, one mistake on one night will add up to, you know, a pretty big dent in the, in the points deal, and it's really tough to make that, you know, 10 or 15 points back up. So, you know, we've been doing well with the guys in the shop. You know, the Sunrise Board has done a really good job so far this year, and I'm having a good time. Well, good deal. I mean, hey, if you, if you keep finishing the top five, that championship's going to be an easy thing to sew up. Yeah, I wish it was that easy. I got a, there's, a, there's like three or four guys, and I think, you know, I think I'm the only guy that's finished the top five all seven or eight races, but there's the other three that finished the top five all but one race. You know, they're not too far, they're not too far behind. I think second place is three points behind me. Oh, goodness. Okay. Are they doing the same type points like they're doing in the regular top three series where you just get one point per position? Yeah, so they give you three points. So first, uh, to win the race, you get three bonus points. To lead a lap, you get a bonus point. And then to lead the most laps, you get a bonus point. Um, but then per position behind you is one point per spot. You know, so he's only three spots behind me. You know, three positions or three bonus points, which isn't too hard to accumulate in one night. Cool. Now, do you have, this is a question for you, um, what about your future? Do you have something in your mind that, that you want to try to adhere to as, as far as moving further on up? Well, after a couple of years ago, I kind of did. You know, everybody kind of falls into that cookie cutter or what I assume is kind of the cookie cutter position for most young kids trying to trying to get a career in NASCAR. Everybody sees themselves running, you know, the local divisions and getting into the Canon series or the Spears SRL Stock with Tour, and you win a bunch of races, and then you're just waiting for your phone call. And you know, it's tough nowadays. You don't get those phone calls anymore. You know, a lot of the a lot of getting yourself into the nationwide of the trucks is you know finding or having the you know, let's say two and a half million dollars to run a full season in the K N or not K N, I'm sorry, but the Camping World Truck Series. Yeah. You gotta you gotta have a good chunk of change to bring to the table to get the teams interested in you. So you know, it's kind of more of a I've taken more of a realistic approach here in the last year or so, you know, knowing that, you know, now that the reality is kinda of set in that, you know, I'm twenty seven. I've been racing the Canyon Series now for a year and a half, and I've been running like a touring type late model or super late for almost four years now. And you know, it's, you're no longer kind of waiting for a phone call. You're always you're always networking, you're always t- you know all the people, but you really never know. It, it can just take that one opportunity. But uh, you know, it's just kind of networking, and it's more it's more important to be sponsorship savvy, I think, than it is to be you know really good behind the wheel. Yeah, uh, it's it's just so many things out there. I mean. Back many years ago, it used to be the teams had all the sponsorships. All they had to do was shop for a good driver. Now it's starting to change. You know, it's changed around now that you you got all these sponsors, but they want to be with a good driver. And of course, your driver has to hook up with the right sponsor, and then they can go to the team that they want to drive for. And and that's what the whole thing is nowadays. So it makes it a whole lot harder to to get every deal you want to get into. You know, just uh, having somebody see you and knowing that you're a real good race car driver, it may open some doors. Um, a friend of mine out here at Langley Speedway, C.E. Falk, uh, he's uh, gotten a couple of truck rides out of, uh, you know, from the from people seeing him race and seeing how well he's done. Uh, another guy in the K&N E-Series, C.J. Fajan, he uh, recently had uh, a couple of truck Truck rides from from uh, people too as well. So it, it well, that's good. To, that's good to see guys or teams giving guys like that opportunities. I heard a lot of good. I don't know the CD Falk, but I've heard a lot of good things about him. It seems like he's fast on every drive. Yeah, it's good to see. Good to see owners or kids getting chances. So even if it's not myself or a, you know, it's still good to see kids a little bit of talent getting some sort of opportunity when they don't have a lot of money to bring. Yeah, and I hate to say this. I've been around a long time, and I've seen a lot of, of of guys, girls, good drivers, can race their butts off, but if nobody finds them, they're just going to be like the toys and, and stuff in a store that's in the back room that's never seen, never sold. 
Exactly. That's exactly it. That's why I, but recently I've kind of just become to enjoy it. You know, I got two really, really good owners. You know, I couldn't. Usually when you get rides like one well, in the situation I'm in where I'm not bringing them any money to the table, you know, sometimes there's hoops to jump through. There's stuff attached, you know, to where your life is. You're still having to do things on the side to make you know, worth their while. But I got very fortunate on both the guys that I drive for. Absolutely amazing. And they, they make my life a lot easier, and it makes it a lot of fun. You know, it's fun to go to the races with them. They'll have a good time, you know, and, you know, it's like you show up and whether or not you're going to, get a phone call on Monday to go race the truck or something, you still at least enjoy every last minute of it. You really don't know, you know, when it, when you'll be done racing. You just can never, you never anticipate how many years you have left in it. You know, and it's just fun to be able to enjoy it while you're doing it. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I've I, I probably raced for about eight, seven, eight years in the late model series. I had a good time. Um, my biggest thing I would love to be able to do someday would be to have a team that where I can go out and say, okay, I want to get some of these young drivers that you hear about and get them out there and give them a couple of races to show us some stuff, you know, and have, you know, have go out and, and court some sponsors and say, hey, let's do it the old way. Let's put some money out there. Let's find some good drivers and, then once you find the good drivers, then hey, maybe we'll set up a nice package deal that marries you up to the driver for the sponsor and let them roll. Uh, I hope you do. That'd be that'd be amazing. That'd be cool. But uh, and, but that's just one of those things, and it it will take time no matter what you try to do. Oh, absolutely. So uh, what's your next big race you got coming up? Yeah, I race uh, two weeks. Yeah, uh, two weeks in Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, at uh, Rocky Mountain Raceway for the SRL Southwest Tour, and then the following weekend, uh, we're racing in uh, Colorado, Colorado National Speedway, I believe, with the Canyon Pro Series West, and then we go a weekend after that to Iowa. So we got like a triple, a triple header coming up, I believe. Yeah, good deal. Busy. Yeah, now here's here's a curve question for you. In, in your racing career, what what did you trip over or stumble into that created your most embarrassing moment? <laughs> I was uh, I was racing modifieds at my local short track in Lakeport, California, and uh, we were running our end of the year race. It was like a big open show, and I was running third or fourth, and I was trying to get by a guy for probably ten or fifteen laps, and I got impatient. There was a small window that opened up that I probably shouldn't have filled. And I ended up spinning this guy out for third place, I believe. And uh, the guy, obviously, caution came out. And under caution, the guy's brother was up in the stands flipping me off. I was, I was waving to him, you know, trying to be a smart ass. And I failed to see that the leader had stopped. Ooh. Right. And I completely assholed the guy right in front of the grandstand. So I was. One of the more embarrassing times I think I've had, driver. Oh goodness! Hey, you, oh, yeah. you got to be able to laugh on it, laugh at it. <laughs> you do, you do. Yeah, have some sort of humor in it. Oh goodness! So, let's see what else we got going here. Now, now here I'm gonna ask you something about Madison. This is totally away from racing. Did you ever hear of the Madison Scouts? The Madison what? Scouts. S C O U T S. I never did, no. Okay. It, it, it's one the uh, Madison Scouts out there is a drum and bugle team. They they travel all around the country. Actually they sometimes travel out of the world, um, out of out of the United States even, do do competitions and stuff like that. It's it's something neat and interesting and Madison is known for having one of the best teams in the world. I didn't know that. I guess I must have lived under a hole or something. Well, hey, I, that, that's like uh, if nobody had ever told me, I wouldn't have known about In-N-Out Burgers out on the west, western half of the country. <laughs> Those are pretty popular. It's hard to find food that good, really. I think that's, uh, that's definitely one of the stops I hear most people coming from the Midwest or the East Coast. They definitely always like pulling into one of them when they get out here. Oh God! So many of the the race teams and drivers and everything they that uh, whether it's in truck nationwide or cup they say as soon as they fly in, somebody from the team is already heading out and going to pick up about twenty or fifty burgers depending on how many people want them, 
and and bringing it back to the team. I've heard of people taking and and getting ready to leave on the plane, and they'll go and pick them up, a whole bunch of them, load them on the plane, and then eat them once they get back to to the Carolina area. Yeah, they got to figure it out. They're non uh, they're a non franchise company, so all the In and Out burgers they have, which are all I think they're they're eventually migrating into Arizona and southern like southern Nevada. So I know they they don't allow any franchises, so it's all whatever you call it, corporate owned or yeah. family owned. I guess they keep it they keep everything fresh and fresh and tasty. Well, I, I, apparently they're right outside the the, the speedway in Nevada. Because uh, one of the guys that's usually on the show with me, he works with uh, Motor Week. And, and uh, he says when he goes out there, he flies out there. That's the first thing he stops and does, too. He hits for the in and out Burger down by the track. Cool. I got a question for you out of curiosity. All right. How did you, how'd you, find, out, how'd you find out about me and my racing? Well, uh, Jack Dodson. had contacted me uh, and about having you on the show. That's cool. Yeah, um, he was going to be on here, and he had a, a there was a death in the family, so he's out in Blacksburg, Virginia, for the funeral, or else he'd be here talking to you with me. That's horrible. Um, wishing my best condolences if you wouldn't mind. Uh, no problems with that. Uh, he usually watches the show, so he'll hear it. <laughs> gotcha. So anyway, well, let me go ahead and let you get out of here. Go ahead and run through your sponsors one more time and let you go back to having some fun. Oh, heck yeah. Well, I got to thank, I got Byron and, uh, got Byron and Carol Campbell on our SRL team. We got Four Star Fruit, Double Eagle Transportation, Verona's Racing. And then on the, the Canyon Pro Series website, we got Sunrise Ford, which where we got a lot of support from Ibox Springs and Lucas Oil. Um, those are the guys that are always helping us out. So without them, we couldn't do it. And thank you for all the listeners for listening in. Thank you for having me on the show. No problem. We'll get you back on here. Uh, I'm sure Jack wanted to do some talking with you too, except, uh, of course, things didn't work out for him. So you uh, have... It would be, be, be pleasure to get back on at some point if you wouldn't mind. That'd be cool. Oh, no problem. We, we enjoy having repeat offenders. <laughs> 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 we, we, have, we have a lot of fun things... Um, we get into some of the strangest things. Uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, one of the most unusual and neat conversations I ever had was with the lady that designed and does all of the Sprint Cups uh, window nets. Yeah. And, and that was a very, very interesting conversation. I like getting into stuff that, that's way off outside, but directly, you know, in, input in... Uh, Affects out all the people there. Yeah, I'm sure that's the hands of people enjoy listening to. Yeah, and of course I like the up and coming guys. Get them on there, get people to know them. So one day, a few years down the road, you say, "Oh yeah, I remember Derek. We we were listening to him on the show, and now he's up here in the Winston Cup, or excuse me, Sprint Cup. Or who knows what cup it's going to be in a few years? But never <laughs> <laughs> know. The Let's Talk Racing Cup. I like that. <laughs> There you go. How's it going? There you go. All right. Have a good night, and we'll get you back on here again, Derek. Right, thank you again. Take care. You too. Well, hopefully everybody enjoyed the show tonight. If not, oh well, we did. I did. Whoops. Well, the guest did too. What the heck? Ain't gonna lie. We always have fun. So we'll catch everybody back next week on the show, and we'll see ya. Hey guys, I'm Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain, and thank you for watching Let's Talk Races. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. I'm Timothy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. Hi, this is David Plenz, driver of the 33 NASCAR Late Model. 2011 Old Dominion Speedway Track Champion. Thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing TV. Hi, I'm Sam Hunt, driving a 42 car. I want to thank Let's Talk Racing. Hi, my name is Natalie Sather. I drive the 94 K&N Lady Eagle Safety Work, Butler Built Seats, Bell House.